Section 12 of Vegetarianism and Occultism. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Andrea Fiore. Vegetarianism and Occultism by C. W. Leadbeater. Section 12. Man's Duty Towards Nature. Then there is the far more important unselfish side of the question, that of man's duty towards nature. Every religion has taught that man should put himself always on the side of the will of God in the world, on the side of good as against evil, of evolution as against retrogression. The man who ranges himself on the side of evolution realizes the wickedness of destroying life. He knows that, just as he is here in this physical body in order that he may learn the lessons of this plane, so is the animal occupying his body for the same reason, and that through it he may gain experience at his lower stage. He knows that the life behind the animal is the divine life, that all life in the world is divine, that animals, therefore, are truly our brothers, even though they may be younger brothers, and we have no sort of right to take their lives for the gratification of our perverted tastes no right to cause them untold agony and suffering, merely to satisfy our degraded and detestable lusts. We have brought things to such a pass, with our miscalled sport and our wholesale slaughterings, that all wild creatures fly from the sight of us. Does that seem like the universal brotherhood of God's creatures? Is that your idea of the golden age of the worldwide kindliness that is to come? a condition when every living thing flees from the face of man because of his murderous instincts? There is an influence flowing back upon us from all this, an effect which you can hardly realize unless you are able to see how it looks when regarded with the sight of the higher plane. Every one of these creatures, which you so ruthlessly murder in this way, has its own thoughts and feelings with regard to all this, it has horror, pain, and indignation, and an intense but unexpressed feeling of the hideous injustice of it all. The whole atmosphere about us is full of it. Twice lately I have heard from psychic people that they felt the awful aura or surroundings of Chicago even many miles away from it. Mrs. Passant herself told me the same thing years ago in England that long before she came in sight of Chicago, she felt the horror of it, and the deadly pall of depression descending upon her, and asked, Where are we, and what is the reason that there should be this terrible feeling in the air? To sense the effect as clearly as this is beyond the reach of the person who is not developed, but though all the inhabitants may not be directly conscious of it and recognize it, as Mrs. Besant did, they may be sure that they are suffering from it unconsciously, and that that terrible vibration of horror and fear and injustice is acting upon every one of them, even though they do not know it. End of section 12. Recording by Andrea Fiore.